before we continue, let's uh, think about where we are. We have created a data layer that consists of the modal, nothing to do with the user interface, and we enabled accessing this data layer using WCF service. Again, nothing to do with the user interface. Now it is time to really display something on the screen, and we will start with our full client. Let's add a new project. This time it will be a WPF application written in C sharp, and we will call this one as key result dot full client. To make it easier for the next steps to keep WPF and Silverlight in sync, I will change the default namespace from ski result at full client to ski result dot UI for newly created classes. So for instance the view model will create a view model class in a view uh, moments will now be in the namespace that is called UI. Uh, I did that because the view model will be shared between WPF and Silverlight. That's a very important thing in this demo here. Uh, and so it makes really sense to not call the view model class or the namespace of the view model class key result dot full client, but rather ski result dot UI because it is used for the full client and the silverlight client. So let's start with the simple things. Do the user interface layer first. So we add a new control here to our main form. We'll do a combo box. Uh, it will be on top of the screen. And in usual programming, let's quickly set up this grid here. It's called, we have a row definitions and we have a grid. Uh, we have a row definition here, and we have a height. This is for the first row. Let's call it auto, and the rest will be filled using the star syntax here. So the combo box is now on the top of the screen, and let's say we have a uh, margin here that is called 5. Okay, I'm fine with that. So now I want to display all the events inside of this combo box. How can I do that? The first thing would be we could open up the code behind file and right here is some code for instance uh, adding the service reference and adding the items manually. We are not going to do that. The other thing is we could add a property to this main window fill this property by accessing the WCF service and do a data bind from the view, the XAML file, to the main window, so to the code behind file. We are not going to do that either because then we would have all the query logic, all the service access logic inside our user interfaces uh, code behind file. We do not want to do that. We will follow the MVVM architecture, the modal view view model architecture. We see the XAML file and the code behind file for the XAML as the view, so there shouldn't be any logic inside the view layer. Instead, we will create an intermediate layer between the view and the modal, and this intermediate layer is called view modal. Let's put all the view model stuff in a new folder and call this one view modal and add a new class. Let's call this one um, um, main tenants form view modal and this view modal class is public and it will of course need access to our WCF service and therefore we will add a service reference. Discover this one. Let's see if it comes up. It should. We've tried that before. Yeah, here we have it. Here we have our operations. That looks nice. We call this one again key result service. Yep. Okay. Service is set up. I'm not perfectly fine with this one. I want to have the asynchronous operations too because uh, we will write nice code, we will always keep the user interface responsive to the user and therefore we will use the asynchronous version of our service calls uh, just in case that accessing the database will take a few moments. So we have 
created the service reference, I called this key result service, and therefore it will be very easy for us to now implement our view model. What should the view model do? It should offer a property, let's call this one events, and the view layer will bind to this property to display all the events. So let's start with this one. We have a constructor and we will need private key result service key result service client here. Uh, let's do it using it's nicer. Let's call this one service client. Um, equals to use key result service client. That one's fine. And add a property. Uh, we will call this one uh, events. So private i enumerable of event events. And we'll, this one is the field. And now we have the property i enumerable of event events. We have a Getter, the getter returns this dot event and the setter just says this dot event equals to value. So why didn't I use an automatically evented, um, uh, automatically automatically implemented property here? Um, the reason is that. For the view model, it has to inform the user interface whenever a property change changes. Because when the user interface layer binds to the events property, it has to get notified whenever the view model refreshes the content of a property. And therefore, we need to implement the I notify property changed interface here. Let's implement this one. It's just a event handler called property changed, and for the sake of simplicity, we add a private helper method here, private void on property changed. It's, it's really just a helper method because otherwise we would have to write the following code a, a lot of times. Property name if this dot property changed not null. This dot property changed. This new property changed event args, and we have the property name here. Yeah, this is just a helper method, as I mentioned before. But now we can say this dot on property changed events. Yeah, looks nicely. The problem is that we do not fill this events field here anywhere in our code so we need another small little method that really does the the call to the WCF um, service uh, it would be a good idea to do the first call inside the constructor so we say this dot refresh uh, events and we have to implement this one let's generate a method stuff for us here yeah here we have it and now here we have to create our uh, our service call so we say this dot service client dot get events but as I told you before asynchronously um, get event async started starts the the WCF call but we have to handle the the event when the WCF call comes back to our uh, full client, so we have to say this dot service client dot gate get events async completed here, uh, and we have a sender, we have event arcs, uh, and we define this as a lambda, and here we say the events is completed. We say this dot events equals to dot result and as you see result is an array of event and therefore is i enumerable of event and this one looks nice by setting the event property here we have called the setter and when the setter is called we say on property change so it is guaranteed that the user interface will be informed when the WCF call returns and the user interface is able to refresh the content of the combo box. But wait a second, we have not bound the content of the combo box to this events property here. We have to do that. 
for this, we add the view model, the main tenants form view model from our view model of folder. here to the main window form and then we have to um, set the data context of the main window to the view model that's a very important step here I'll do that in the loaded event so this dot loaded uh, plus equals this is the sender and the event args and we'll say um, this dot data context equals to this dot view model find with this one Yep, loaded event. And last but not least, of course, we have to do the, the binding. Item source equals to binding path equals to events. This is our property that has been filled inside the view model. So why does the form, the XAML knows, know that this event property regards to this event property inside our view model here? Quite simple, just because inside our main window uh, code behind file we set the data context and therefore the XAML file knows exactly where to bind against to. So that's, let's start, oh sorry I have the wrong startup project let me correct that, cancel that startup project is now our full client, set a startup project start the, this one up and let's see if the combo box is filled correctly Here we have our form and the combo box contains yeah, two rows as you can see. Oi, I forgot something, I forgot the display member path, but as you, as you can see we have the two events that are inside the database. Let's fix this one up. We'll say display member path equals to uh, I think it is called event name. Let me quickly look that up in the data model. I'm not perfectly sure. Yes, it's called event name. Event name. Start the, the debugger again. We have our form. And as you can see, we have our two records inside the database. Please be aware of the architecture here. A very clear separation. The view layer just contains of the XAML file and the code behind file does nothing more than creating the view model. The view model class on the other hand, let's take a look, here we have it, the view model contains all the logic that is necessary to load up all the events from the WCF service it does that asynchronously and informs the view layer by implementing the iNotify property changed interface very important step here this now we have the basic setup for our MVVM model